The next one is the cubital tunnel syndrome. And here are the headings what we are going to study in this module. We already discussed about uh, the anatomy of the cubital tunnel syndrome, but in this module we are going to discuss in detail anatomy as well as its clinical importance. So cubital tunnel syndrome is also a compression neuropathy of the ulnar nerve. And it is the most common compression neuropathy of the upper extremity after the carpal tunnel syndrome. So what are the sites of entrapment of the ulnar nerve in the cubital tunnel? So as you know about uh, the anatomy of the cubital tunnel, the entrapment of the nerve may be between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris as you can see the aponeurosis is there which is connecting the humeral head as well as uh, the ulnar head of the flexor carpi ulnaris. So the entrapment may be seen exactly behind the aponeurosis between the humeral as well as the ulnar head of the flexor carpi ulnaris. And the injury may also be seen or uh, may be common at the orchid of Struthers. We already know that the orchid of Struthers is the aponeurotic band exactly at the middle of the arm which is connecting the medial head of the triceps as well as the medial intramuscular septum. So the location may be at the orchid of Struthers or may be between the Osborne's ligament and the medial carpal ligament that is exactly at the cubital tunnel. So these are all the three sites which causes injury to the ulnar nerve. So now what are the causes of the compression? We came to know what are the sites of the compression. Now let us see what are the causes of the compression. For example if you see mainly in the cubital tunnel the most common cause in the cubital tunnel may be the fracture of the medial epicondyle which is more commonly seen in an younger individual less than 16 years of age because of the non-fusion of the medial epicondyle with the shaft of the humerus because the medial epicondyle is the secondary center which generally fuses uh, approximately after 16 years of age. And uh, after the fractures uh, of the medial epicondyle, the cause of compression may be the non-union of the medial epicondyle. So in rare occasions we may see that uh, non-union of the medial epicondyle with the shaft of the humerus because of any developmental anomaly. And the next one may be due to the formation of the osteophytes or uh, hypertrophic ossification, tumors or the presence of ganglionic cysts and the cubitus varus or valgus deformities and medial epicondylitis, burns and uh, elbow contracture release all these are the causes of uh, the compression of the ulnar nerve which in turn causes the cubital tunnel syndrome. Now whatever may be the cause of the compression, the ulnar nerve is compressed in the cubital tunnel or behind the aponeurosis or uh, at the arcade of feathers. But what are the main signs and symptoms of the cubital tunnel syndrome? So mainly here paresthesias of a small finger and the ulnar half of the ring finger and the ulnar dorsal hand are the important uh, signs which are mainly seen which is associated with the paresthesias. Not only that, we already know that the interosseae are also innervated by the ulnar nerve, interosseous muscles and the first web space atrophy is a classical feature of the cubital tunnel syndrome. Along with this, according to the ulnar nerve supply, which in turn it supplies uh, ring finger uh, that is the ulnar half of the ring finger uh, as well as the little finger. Ring and small finger clawing is mainly seen which is a characteristic feature here. Weakened uh, grasp and weak pinch mainly due to the loss of uh, thumb adduction as much as 70% of the pinch uh, strength is lost. So this is what we will see mainly in the cubital tunnel syndrome. Now after knowing uh, the signs and symptoms as well as the sites of compression of the cubital tunnel syndrome, so let us talk about the investigations. Because of uh, involvement of the nerve, you need to identify the degree of the nerve injury mainly by the nerve conduction studies. Based on the reports, whether it is mild or severe, you will go for the medical management or the surgical management. So the treatment options which are available are two. One is operative and other one is non-operative. So, so first if you see the non-operative procedure, 
non operative procedure include the medical management that is uh, administration of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs activity modification and the night time elbow extension splinting is mainly done as a non operative management and talking about the operative management ulnar nerve decompression without uh, transposition is one of the procedure and also ulnar nerve decompression and anterior transposition is one procedure and another one may be medial epicondylectomy is uh, mainly associated with uh, the pathology which is associated with the medial epicondyle right so these are the surgical procedures which are available for the cubital tunnel syndrome by this we completed uh, a very important module of the clinical anatomy that is the cubital tunnel syndrome